My name is Ahmed Qadi. I am from the University of Alberta. I am talking about a recent publication in Journal of Magnetic Resonance Imaging. Progressive ion accumulation across multiple sclerosis phenotypes revealed by sparse classification of deep gray matter. I will be only presenting brief highlights from the paper. For further details, please read the paper. Before starting, I would like to acknowledge grant support from Multiple Sclerosis Society of Canada and the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. Multiple sclerosis is a disease of the central nervous system that is characterized by demyelination of axons, which is the classical model, and also neuronal generation. There are four clinical phenotypes of MS, clinically isolated syndrome, or CIS, relapsing remaining MS, or RMS, secondary progressive MS, or SPMS, and primary progressive MS, or PPMS. Deep brain matter in the MS brain contains elevated iron levels and demyelinating lesions, and also neuronal and axonal loss. This was revealed by a study by Vilsenio in 2009 and by other more recent studies. The purpose of the study was to create an automated framework for localized analysis of brain ion accumulation and demyelination using sparse classification of combined quantitative solubility and trans of relaxation rate out of star maps. We wanted to apply this framework for evaluation of deep brain matter in multiple sclerosis phenotypes relative to health controls. In terms of MRI acquisitions, we acquired whole brain 4.7 Tesla gradient echo multi echo acquisitions which took approximately 10 minutes. And you can see on the left, this is a representative R2 star map from a control subject. And on the right, this, the quantitative severity map from the same subject. And we are interested in the deep brain matter, which is highlighted by a yellow box in this slice. In terms of image processing, we first registered our brain acquisitions to a global atlas from 10 healthy controls according to methodology published by Fabsis et al. We used T1-weighted MPH images and quantitative stability maps to automatically segment deep gray matter structures in atlas space according to methodology published in the same paper. Example T1-weighted and quantitative stability segmentation contours are shown from a healthy subject, and the visualization of the four segmented deep gray structures is shown on the right, the carotid nucleus, the globus pallidus, the putamen, and the thalamus. We next labeled regions in deep brain matter as iron accumulation or demyelination using the legend shown in the table on the bottom right, where an increase in mean R2 star and mean quantitative stability of patients versus controls is labeled as iron accumulation, while a decrease in mean R2 star and increase in mean quantitative stability is labeled as demyelination. We finally performed dimensionality reduction using eigen anatomy sparse logistic regression to classify regions that consistently change in patients compared to controls. As for our statistical analysis framework, we started by producing R2 star and quantitative stability maps for all subjects within our patient and control groups. Next, we subtracted the mean R2 star and the mean quantitative stability of controls from patients, which we'll use to label lesions within the deep gray matter as iron accumulation or demyelination. In parallel, a sparse logistic regression step was performed to identify sparse regions in R2 star and quantitative stability maps. The intersection of R2 star and quantitative stability sparse maps were used to identify common sparse volumes that consistently change in patients compared to controls. Next, we used the identified iron accumulation and demyelination labels and common sparse volumes to produce iron accumulation and demyelination maps for all subjects within our patient control groups. Finally, we performed statistical analysis on our iron accumulation and demyelination maps, and from that we got the p value indicating significance of our results, a percent sparsity representing the percentage of the deep gray matter volume that is ion accumulation or demyelination, and an effect size which indicated the strength of the observed effect. We applied this analysis framework to four MS groups, the clinically isolated syndrome group, the lapsed and remitting MS group, the secondary progressive MS group, and the prime progressive MS group. We also applied the same framework to age-matched control groups for each MS group. Now I will present some highlights of our paper's results. The shown table demonstrates the value of singular and combined R2 star and quantitative stability sparse analysis compared to the standard whole structure analysis. For example, the putamen and thalamus of the lapsing reading MS group became significantly different between patients and controls when using singular R2 star, but was not significant using whole structure analysis, which is highlighted in red in the table. 
This indicates that the sparse analysis has increased the power of the test. Also, when comparing the elapsing remaining MS cardiac nucleus for combined structure analysis compared to the singular sparse analysis, we find that the combined analysis was significant when the single analysis was not significant. While the reverse effect was observed in the thalamus spontaneous stability of the prime progressive MS group, and this can be explained by the increased specificity offered by the combined use of star and greater stability. When we applied our developed analysis framework to the studied MS groups, we found that there was a progressive increase across MS phenotypes for ion accumulation. We will demonstrate this quantitatively using two measures, the percent sparsity in the total deep perimatic structures for ion accumulation and the percent effect size. As shown on the left, the percent sparsity increased progressively with advanced MS phenotypes using combined sparse outer star analysis shown using the green line and quantitative stability analysis shown using the orange line. Please note that we use the intersection of R2 star and quantitative stability sparse regions, and hence the R2 star combined sparse regions and the quantitative stability sparse combined regions are identical. Also, progressive ion accumulation was observed for R2 star single analysis, while singular quantitative stability sparse analysis, which is the purple line, indicates ion accumulation in nearly the entire structure, regardless of the MS phenotype. No significant ion accumulation was detected in the CIS group, and no significant demyelination was detected in all MS groups compared to the age-matched controls. The figure on the right shows the effect size of singular, combined, and whole structure analysis. All analysis methods demonstrated a progressive increase in effect size with advanced MS phenotypes. However, the combined sparse and the single sparse quantitative stability analysis demonstrated the highest effect sizes compared to other analysis methods. Also, we observed a progressive increase in the effect size of the ventricular volume with advanced MS phenotypes. Shown at the bottom is a visual illustration of this effect using the iron map of the labs and MS group. The red region indicates identified uh, iron accumulation in a slice for the lapsing, for the lapsing renic MS group. This region increased for the secondary progressive MS group and further increased for the primary progressive MS group. In conclusion, a novel, automated, and reproducible pipeline for localized analysis of iron and demyelination in multiple scores has been developed, and this allowed the evaluation of common volumes suggested of iron and myelin in MS patients relative to health controls. Effect size of these volumes for MS also has been shown. The significant iron accumulation but no demyelination was observed in multiple scores decay matter for the studied sample size, and the size and effect of common volumes suggestive of iron accumulation has been shown to progressively increase during the clinical stages of MS.